Greetings and welcome to A Body Like Bruce. First, a shout out to our subscribers or those who have been with us from the start, who have stayed loyal, even though we didn't do much work for quite a while there. And also to those who recently subscribed, great kudos, as a great man once said, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We really appreciate that you took the time to look at our channel and our videos and then liked it, so subscribed. We are very grateful to you. So that shout out goes to all. We may have finally found the book that we are really looking for. The Warrior Within, The Philosophies of Bruce Lee, to better understand the world around you and achieve a rewarding life. Forward by Linda Lee Codwell and possibly edited by John Little. Contents page. More content. Forward. Dear most fortunate reader, something about Bruce Lee has attracted you to pick up this book and to watch our series of videos on Bruce Lee. You recall his screen image, a great fighter, fast, powerful, an opponent to be feared, a man in superb physical condition with washboard abdominals, broad deltoids, defined forearms, an actor whose personality excited you, charmed you and inspired you. Perhaps you have seen his films many times, classics still unsurpassed in the martial arts genre. But Bruce Lee, a philosopher? This is a side of the man that you haven't considered, but your interest is piqued. Read on, my friend, for within the pages of this book, John Little delivers to you an adventure of the spirit and opportunity for you to know the real Bruce Lee. Linda states, during their marriage of nine years, she knew Bruce probably more thoroughly and intimately than most. In his outward life, she saw him struggle to overcome stumbling blocks along the path to the attainment of his goals. In his interior life, she watched him struggle to overcome the self-doubts and insecurities that plague us all. Bruce would be the first person to tell you that he was not a perfect man, but more important, he would say that his mission in life was to become a real human being. His journey was a constant process of evolving one step at a time, with the object being not to reach a state of perfection, but to experience life with every nerve exposed, fully in touch with gut level feelings and cerebral senses. To this end, Bruce delved deeply into his psyche to define and refine his own philosophy of life. All knowledge is really self-knowledge, Bruce often said, meaning that the more a person exposes himself to a, to learning opportunities, the more these experiences enrich, enhance and become part of who that person is. Bruce was a model of a self-educated man. His formal education extended through his junior year at the University of Washington, where he majored in philosophy. When Bruce left, college to open the Chun Fan Kung Fu School in Oakland, his education did not stop. Far from it, he continued his quest, the fascination that had driven him from an early age. How does the thinking process of an individual propel him to actualize his full potential in a superior way? That's the question we've been asking and we're looking for that answer. Hopefully we've found it in this book. Bruce was determined to learn about this process within himself. Even as he trained his body for strength and efficiency, so did he discipline his mind to search for the causes of his ignorance. So intensely did Bruce focus his attention on this task that his mind became absolutely centred, while at the same time he was filled with a blazing awareness of all that went on around him. The Essential Kung Fu Man by exploring the depths of his being, he was able to nurture the seeds of his personal philosophy which grew and blossomed into the real Bruce Lee, the man you have experienced experienced as a prodigious fighter, fighting machine, 
and that you will now get to know as a philosopher, a man wise beyond his years. There are others who are good martial artists and fight actors with fabulous physiques. Some have achieved stardom and are richly rewarded for their talent, but there is something about Bruce Lee which makes him irreplaceable in the hearts and minds of his followers all over the world. More than two decades after his death, Linda continues to receive a steady stream of mail from people expressing their admiration for Bruce. A 13-year-old young man, born years after Bruce died, writes to tell her how, or wrote to tell her how Bruce has motivated him, had motivated him to do well in school. A professional man in his 50s told her how his life moved in a positive direction because of Bruce's influence. A young woman says she was inspired to study martial arts because of Bruce and her confidence has soared, had soared in all areas of her life. The stories are innumerable, but similar in theme. Bruce Lee is a role model, a hero image, and a real human being. What is this something about Bruce Lee that continues to fascinate people in all walks of life? Linda believed it was, or believes it is the depth of his personal philosophy, which subconsciously, or otherwise, projects on the screen and through his writings, his personality was such that he brought you into his inner world, changed your attitudes, altered your perceptions, fine-tuned your awareness. This book gives you the opportunity to reshape your memories of Bruce Lee, to view him from a new perspective. One who has availed himself of the opportunity to learn from Bruce Lee is John Little, author of this book. From an early age, John immersed himself in the study of philosophy and Bruce Lee. Through the application of vast energy and intellect, tireless research and cultivated insights, John has undertaken to compare and contrast Bruce's, Bruce Lee's philosophies with age-old gurus and modern sages from the East and West. Second, he relates how Bruce applied his philosophy to everyday life and more broadly to his lifelong pursuits. Finally, John opens the door for you to take from Bruce Lee's way of life that which is useful to you and in doing so to develop and nurture your own personal philosophy. To paraphrase one of Bruce's lines from Enter the Dragon, it is like a finger pointing to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Look beyond the words on these pages. Think about these thoughts, then feel them then make them your own. I wish you abundant energy, good health and quiet awareness. Linda Lee Codwell, Boisa, Idaho. Postscript. A scholarship in drama has been established in memory and honour of Linda's son, Brandon, at Whitman College. A scholarship for medical research has been established in Bruce and Brandon Lee's names at the University of Arkansas. John Little is donating a substantial percentage of the royalties from the sale of this book to those scholarships, the Lee family is grateful, or we're grateful for his generosity. Forward to the general public, Bruce Lee was a famous Chinese movie star in martial arts films. To the martial arts community, Bruce Lee was a sensational martial artist with superb fighting skills and stage presence, who was also the founder of a new fighting system. However, very few people know that Bruce Lee was also an innovative thinker, a philosopher and a scholar who had a deep understanding of Chinese Taoist and Zen philosophy. This probably would be John Little. Okay, no, maybe somebody else. For this person, it was a great privilege to become one of his students, training at Los Angeles School in 1967. Bruce was a master teacher, a creative genius of the 20th century who was able to combine the ancient philosophy of the Tao with a Chinese Wing Chun system, modern Western boxing schools and karate kicks to create a thoroughly effective unarmed fighting system, which he called Qi Kung Do, commonly translated into English as the way of the intercepting fist, or JKD. His teachings have awakened in this person a new understanding of the ultimate reality in unarmed combat and have totally altered not only their training but their whole life. Bruce Lee's thoughts and writings regarding his JKD philosophy were printed in many publications over a period of some 16 years. Some of these periodicals have long since vanished from existence which has made it very difficult indeed 
for anyone hoping to learn more about Bruce Lee's life and philosophy. It is equally frustrating for those of us in the martial arts who have longed to learn more about particular aspects of his fighting art. Fortunately, this person's friend John Little, who I've come to know quite well over the past 12 months, has succeeded in this respect. He is to be commanded, commended for tackling this monumental task of writing the definitive book of Bruce Lee's philosophy. John has spent over two years and travelled to at least three continents in an effort to gather all the written and spoken words of Bruce Lee. Intermingling Bruce's material with his own well-researched comments, John has created a comprehensive book with 17 chapters under three major headings. One may read this book from beginning to end, or one may choose to read any chapter whose heading seems to be interesting because each chapter was written on a particular aspect of Bruce's philosophy and therefore stands alone. Yet when all the chapters are combined, they form a cohesive body. This book covers many aspects of Bruce's philosophy, his personal views on the issue of relationships at different levels and his approach to overcoming adversity and stress. There is even a chapter that John has devoted entirely to the five films Bruce produced, wherein he goes to great lengths to describe the interesting background of each film and the hidden messages that Bruce attempted to convey to its viewers. Also included are excerpts from a rare personal interview that John conducted with the late Brandon Lee, Bruce's son, that reveals a probing, inquisitive mind very much like his father's. This chapter provides the reader with a very glimpse, rare glimpse of Brandon's life, his personality and his aspirations in becoming a successful actor. In the appendixes are two very informative essays by Alan Watts, a philosopher whom Bruce was particularly impressed by, as well as John Liffle's chronological list of the important events of Bruce's life and a listing of Bruce's principal works. These are valuable records for anyone wishing to know more about Bruce's accomplishments and contributions. For the martial artists at large, this book provides a valuable reference to better understand the philosophical foundations of Bruce Lee's unarmed combative art. For the JKD practitioner, the three stages of cultivation in, Bruce's, in Bruce Lee's martial art and the four-step guide to self-enlightenment are fully explored. Since I was born, raised and educated in China and have been teaching the Chinese language and culture at Pasadena College for over 11 years, as well as serving as a Chinese language translator and lecturer on medical terminology at the Samra University of Chinese Traditional Medicine in Los Angeles, I would like to make a comment regarding the English translation of Ji Kundo. It has been commonly translated as a way of the intercepting fist, and this is quite acceptable. I would like to expand the meaning of this translation, however, the word Dao, pronounced Dao in Mandarin and Do in Cantonese, means the way of nature or the creative force governing the universe. Thus, the term Ji Kung Do, written in the Chinese language, would mean the intercepting fist that follows the principles of Tao. The same word in the Japanese language, Do, carries the meaning, the way of, or the method of. Thus, the following Japanese terms are translated as indicated Judo, the way of gentleness, Ken Do, the way of sword fighting, Aiki Do, the way of harmonizing the Chi, Shodo, the method of calligraphy. The Chinese sage Lao Tzu, the author of the Tao Te Ching, stated, Tao is that from which all things in the universe are created. The process by which all things are created is produced by this energy or Qi, which originates from Tao. This energy is divided into two aspects, Yin and Yang. All things in the universe have Yin energy and Yang energy. When Yin and Yang energies merge together, they produce a state of harmony, for one complements the other. One mould merges itself into the other, etc. Bruce was so influenced by this concept of the harmonious existence of the yin yang energies that he chose the yin yang symbol, which is referred to by the Chinese as the Dai Chi, the grand ultimate, to be his school emblem, emblem in order to represent the core principle of his JKD fighting art, which contains and utilizes both the firm and pliable energies of yin yang. Bruce added two arrows around the Tai, tai Chi circle to further emphasize that the JKD fighting techniques must 
must contain the harmonies, harmonious interplay of yun, yin, pliable, yielding, and yang, firm, assertive energies. He emphasized that in his JKT fighting art. One does not oppose force with force, but rather complements one's opponent's strong force with yin, or yielding, energy. In his writing, Bruce stated metaphorically that the stiffest tree is easily cracked under pressure, but the bamboo survives by bending with the wind. He also wrote, be like water, because it is soft, resilient and formless. It can never be snapped. Since Bruce's passing, I have been training continually in JKD in my backyard with a few of my own students. I have closely followed Bruce's teachings. Aside from developing hard hitting and powerful kicks, I have also trained in Tai Chi and push hand techniques in order to balance my forceful yang energy with an appropriate degree of yin energy. I have since studied many Chinese manuscripts on Taoist philosophy and the Tai Chi Chuan classics in order to better understand the nature of yin yang energies and how to develop them. It is my first conv firm conviction that Bruce believed that JKD training must involve the cultivation of both yin and yang energies. The cultivation of yang energy involves the sharpening of what Bruce called one's martial tools or the weapons of offence, such as kicking, punching and grabbing. One must also raise his quality of execution by improving coordination, precision, speed and power. The cultivation of yin energy, however, involves increasing the sensitivity and pliability of one's body, improving the soft and yielding skill of one's limbs, and cultivating the relaxation of the mind and body. In addition to developing a detached attitude of mental poise and emotional calmness, as a result, one is able to move to a higher training level, developing the skill of spontane spontaneous adaptation. That's this skill allows one to quickly generate the appropriate amount of energy which complements the opponent's energy almost without conscious effort. During combat, for example, the goal is to use soft and yielding skill in energy to neutralize the force of one's opponent rather than attempt to meet your opponent's force, yang energy, with additional stiff or resisting force, yang energy. As soon as one's opponent overextends himself and senses this weakness and retreats yin yang energy, one should attack immediately yang energy to defeat him and so forth. Bruce also reminded us in his writings that the height of cultivation should move towards simplicity. It is the halfway cultivation that leads to ornamentation. The process to simplify life the process to simplify simplif simplify is like a sculptor who continuously chisels away all the non essentials until he creates a masterpiece. The cultivation of the respective yin and yang energies are listed in Bruce's book, The Tao of Ji Kundo, which is readily available, and so forth, so forth. And that's Daniel Lee. Forward. The course of a bird in flight pays no attention to the lines of east and west. Calligraphic inscription by Alan Watts. He's Bruce talking to John Saxon on the set of Eat of the Dragon. It was surprising, however, when I when recently I discovered that Bruce used to regularly record Alan Watts from the radio or television and play the tapes for his students. And reading his notes and interviews, it is apparent that my father's works were an important influence. Okay, this is Mark Watts, the son of Alan Watts, writing here. Uh, okay, so in reading his notes and interviews, it is apparent that my father's works were an important influence in Bruce Lee's life. And like my father, awareness of the Tao was central to his art. Of course, the phenomenon of an accomplished Eastern uh, teaching his Western students physical martial arts while finding spiritual inspiration in the works of a Westerner with a lifelong curiosity about Eastern wisdom is certainly unusual. But as John Little notes, the problem with the Western approach is that it attempts to explain life as opposed to revealing how to experience it. Both Lee and Watts were involved in teaching endeavours that were in a sense attempts to speak the unspeakable. Two. 
communicate the essence of something that can be understood only directly. In Taoism, they found a uniquely practical philosophy dedicated to, as it were, revealing the purposelessness of life. For in directing ourselves towards a goal, we invariably point our attention ahead and outside of the present moment, as my father was fond of saying. If the goal of dancing were to reach a certain spot on the floor, then obviously the fastest dancer would be the best. The point of dancing is the dance itself, and so it is with life. Life lives in the living flow. No questions are raised. The reason is that life is a living now. Completeness. The now is an absence of the conscious mind to strive to divide that which is indivisible. For once, the completeness of things is taken apart is no longer complete. And these words Bruce Lee revealed that he had discovered a secret that seems to elude most modern people. The secret, simply put, is that although we can simultaneously live and contemplate life, to do so takes something out of it. For the reflective aspects, aspect of the self is not the whole or complete self. As David Baum, the British physicist, said, the trouble with the small self is that it thinks it's the big self. On the following pages, one will find essential ideas once expressed, expressed by Alan Watts, Judy Krishnamurti, both Suzuki's, Joseph Campbell, and many others, and long before by Lao Tzu, Chang Tzu, Buddha, and Shakara. Although many of these ideas are not new, the expression embodies a living art that points to a way of liberation or freedom or release. My father was described as the religion of no religion. Finally, it appears that after Eastern and Western cultures passed while heading in, etc., etc. Et and that's, again, that's Mark Watts, son of Alan Watts. Preface. The legendary 20th century martial arts Bruce Lee, not surprisingly, was fully cognizant of the existence of these great forces, of great forces, causing him to once comment. I feel I have this great creative and spiritual force within me that is greater than faith, greater than ambition, greater than confidence, greater than determination, greater than vision. It is all these combined. Whether it is the Godhead or not, I feel this great force, this untapped power, this dynamic something within me. The feeling defies description and there is no experience with which this feeling may be compared. It is something like a strong emotion mixed with faith, but a lot stronger. NBA superstar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who studied privately with Bruce Lee for a period of six years, recalled how Lee taught him how to tap into his own warrior within. Bruce showed me how to harness some of what was raging inside me and summon it completely at my will. The Chinese call it Qi, the Japanese Ki, the Indians Prana. It is the life force and it is incredibly powerful. It sounds bizarre and it can't be explained adequately except to those who have already experienced it, but it's one of the very few willable miracles. To say this creative power, when channeled correctly, has the potential to be successful is an understatement. After all, when Lee applied it to the realm of business, after appearing in only two films, he negotiated with the company that produced his films and caused them to create a brand new production company, of which he was a 50% shareholder. When he applied it to love, both he and his wife, who also applied his philosophical principles to the relationship, were able to overcome racial differences cultural morals and the bigoted opinions of those who would oppose their love. Bruce Lee also utilised this creative force in developing the revolutionary principle underlying his martial art of Chi Kune Do. And he talks about the cultivation of the warrior with him. Acknowledgements. Epigrammatic insights from the philosophy of Bruce Lee. 
life is a constant process of relating relating man the living creature the creating individual is always more important than any established style kung fu is not preoccupied with breaking bricks and smashing boards we're more concerned with having it affect our whole way of thinking and behavior Linda and I are not one and one. We are two halves that make a whole. You have to apply yourself to be a family. Two halves fitted together are more efficient than either half would ever be alone. The main thing is teaching a man to do his thing. Just be himself. I'm against trying to impose a style on a man. This is an art, an expression of a man's own self. You can't organise truth. That's like trying to put a pound of water into wrapping paper and shaping it. Because of styles, people are separated. They are not united together because styles became law, man. They became law, man. The original founder of the style started out with hypotheses. But now it has become the gospel truth and people who go into it become the product of it. doesn't matter how you are, who you are, how you are structured, how you are built or how you are made. It doesn't seem to matter. You just go in there and become that product. And that, to me, is not right. The greatest help is self-help. There is no other help but self-help. Doing one's best, dedicating oneself wholeheartedly to a given task, which happens to have no end but is an ongoing process that someone's written here. That's the key. All the time people come up and say, Bruce, are you really that good? I say, well, if I tell you I'm good, probably you'll say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you'll know I'm lying. Awesome. All type of knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. And there's the famous empty your mind, be formless shapers, water. There's some more here. And Linda Lee making a comment that he's very proud to be Chinese. There's something about a man who makes you believe in yourself. It's very special, a very special power that only a master has. Bruce made you excel by making you believe in the impossible. Under his tutelage, everything was possible. All doubts were cast aside. Sterling Sullivan, student of Bruce Lee, so the director of his movies as well. A couple of his movies. Is a comment by Taki Kimura, Daniel Lee, student of Bruce Lee, Ted Wong, another student, Daniel Inosanto, Karim Abdul Jabbar, all students of Bruce Lee and Jack Eddy, James Coburn, Shannon Lee, his daughter, Brandon, his son, and finally a comment by Bruce Lee I cannot teach you, only help you to explore yourself, nothing more. Part 1, Seeing the Totality, the true meaning of Kung Fu, it's a philosophy, an integral part of the philosophies of Taoism and Buddhism, the ideals of giving, giving with diversity, etc, etc. Kung Fu, according to the authentic Chinese translation, is a term used to denote a tremendous sense of total achievement or accomplishment. A master of Kung Fu then is one who displays tremendous proficiency in one's craft, and this craft could in effect be anything. A journalist, for example, who is an exceptionally good writer can be said to have Kung Fu. A painter who possesses exceptional skill likewise be said to display Kung Fu. It goes on and on and on. No matter what you do, if you're proficient in it, efficient in it, that's what they call Kung Fu or Kung Fu. To use the term Kung Fu simply as a synonym for fighting ability is to do with the term is to do the term a great injustice. Lee studied long and hard, varied books, 
of philosophy, religion, and spirituality. He read and reread passages by means such as Lao Tzu. See, so he read and reread these passages by means such as Lao Tzu, Chuang Tzu, Sun Tzu, Confucius, Zhu Ye, Socrates, Plato, Baruch Spinoza, Rene Descartes, and David Hume, as well as the more modern sages such as Julie Krishnamurti, D.T. Suzuki, and Alan Watts. He searched among the words for eternal verities and attempted to learn more about the ultimate nature of the soul, the universe out of which it grew, and of humankind in general. It was philosophy that was truly Lee's passion. The martial arts were simply the route he chose to express it. Most martial arts instructors are so doggone stubborn, you know? I mean, the attitude as well. 200 years ago it was taught like this, therefore it should be continued to be taught like this. To maintain that type of attitude, I mean, you've had it. You'll still be back in that time capsule. You will never grow. Because learning is a discovering thing. It's a constant process of discovery. Whereas, if we follow the old method, it is simply a continuous repetition of what was being handed down several hundred years ago. This is P.S. Learning should always be progressive in respect for the past. Lee Lay with the repetition of such outdated martial arts practices organized his beard and he sought through the remainder of his life for a more 20th century approach to the age old problem of combating adversity in all of its forms. Emptying our cup. We need to understand our lives as they fit into the universe as a whole. And it goes deep into the Tao. talks about Wittgenstein a religious philosopher as Wittgenstein states in the first of the seven propositions contained within the track Tetis the world is all that is the case while there is indeed some merit to these propositions Wittgenstein went on to produce a sequence of numbered observations about each proposition or rather observations about the observations about the observations. For instance, the first page of his Tractatus begins thus. One, the world is, is all that is the case. The world is the totality of facts and not of things. The world is determined by the facts and by the beings of, being all the facts. For the totality of facts determine what is the case and so forth. And he goes on further about Wittgenstein. We have a Wittgenstein Bible in our collection somewhere. Wise men don't need to prove their point. Men who need to prove their point aren't wise. The need for an empty cup or an open mind shall serve as a metaphysical starting point. Let us assume for the moment that we in the West do not have all the answers. Let us begin with a blank slate, with no preconceived ideas, biases, opinions or prejudices that will influence our judgment or impede our attempt at acquiring a new understanding on the ways of the world. The ways of the world...
some examples. He talks about the Dow. There's quite a few underlinings here, so I found these passages important when they had this book. The purpose of life is to live, which is simply another way of stating that it is an experiential process. That's Alan Watts, Bruce Lee in comparison. David Baum, the Professor Emeritus, Emeritus of Physics at the University of London and the author of such books as Quantum Theory, Casualty and Chance in Modern Physics, etc. There's a quote here by him, and then one by uh, one probably uh, which influenced Bruce Lee. Chapter 4 on Yin and Yang. And his philosophy, using no way as way, having no limitations as limitation. The common mistake of most martial artists is to identify these two forces, Yin and Yang. To identify them, identify them as Yin and Yang. As dualistic, the two, right? That the so called soft style and the firm style. But yin yang is one inseparable force of one unceasing interplay of movement. They are conceived of as essentially one or of two coexisting forces of one indivisible whole. They are not cause and effect, but should be looked at as sound and echo, or light and shadow. If this oneness is viewed as two separate entities, realization of the ultimate reality is in, of Gong Fu won't be achieved. So what he was saying was they went to or dual or two separate entities they're actually one because one merges into the other you have uh, soft, firm, light, day negative, positive male, female etc so they become one the two become one some more underlying notes about that yin and yang the law of harmony some more underlinings the law of non-interference running water, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless like water, when you put water into a cup it becomes a cup, when you put water into a bottle it becomes a bottle, when you put water into a teapot it becomes a teapot, now water can flow or it can crash, be water my friend. The nature of water. And then Lao Tzu's favourite symbol for the Tao was water. To Bruce Lee, however, the nature of water revealed a different lesson entirely. When Lee was 17 years old, one year shy of his leaving for the United States, he had a profound experience while sailing along in a junk upon the sea that flows through Hong Kong's Victoria Harbour. It was the sea itself, in fact, that contributed to Lee's experience of what the Chinese call Tun Wu. Dun Wu. Japanese Satori, the Zen equivalent of a sudden spiritual insight or awakening causing him to believe that he had united with Tao, the Chinese term for the force underlying all of nature's ways. 
the experience of change leaves life and most certainly his ph philosophy of life. Yeah, we got frustrated because yep, man told him, ah, you know, you need to relax. You should take time off a week or so. Don't do any training, whatever. You know, just need to relax. You got to relax. So that's why he thought I've got to relax, right? He's out there on the water in the jump by himself. And he got angry, frustrated, so he hit the water, right? And then he realised, ah, water. It's soft. You can hit it, but you can't hurt it, etc., etc. So he incorporated that concept into his philosophy. There he is on Marlow, 1969, Kicking the Light, James Garner. Dealing, defeating adversity. The way of no mindedness. So he was practicing that years before it got trendy. Might have picked it up through um, Adam Watts' philosophies, etc. A feline analogy about the cat. And the cat's uh, not tense but relaxed, you know, like anything that moves it leaps at it, etc. etc. Non action, Wu Wei, literally non striving. So forth. Do so further. So there's many things that it quotes as as philosophical or the principles etc. like that, right? That he and Linda weren't two, they were one they were two but they became one, they became a whole, right? Uh, then there's this associate accusations or secret letters and all this sort of stuff that he was playing around, you know, buying it back, all that sort of stuff. So that would mean he'd be saying one thing but not actually following through with it. It just had this appearance, you know, that that's what he was doing. He was all ethical and all that sort of stuff. According to that philosophy, those philosophies from Tao, Buddhism, whatever, right, Zen, but he's doing the complete opposite. So it sort of reminds us of this thing we read about Dan and No Santos, and No Santo, saying Bruce Lee undermined Chi and um, meditation, but he knew that he went home and he practiced it in the privacy of his own home and perfected it, whatever he did. So that could possibly be an example of him saying one thing, saying that he's practicing one thing in his philosophy, when he's actually behind the scenes, he's not actually living up to it. It's just what we come to realise through these different biographies, etc. And that claim by Dan and Santo, and no Santo. But I guess he had so much to lose if he did the cheating behind Linda's back and got caught. She so never seems to make any mention of it, so. Hmm. Makes you think, though. Here's John Saxon on the set of Into the Dragon. racism they had put up with America's bias and racism against Chinese Asian you know him being told well you can't play that part America's not ready for it you know, Chinese in movies or something like that so they had these mocking ones like um, Mickey Rooney is a Japanese landlord and all this sort of stuff yeah.
racism in Hollywood. Yet Bruce Lee believed that under the heavens there was but one family. He didn't care what race or creed you were. He went all out to treat you like a human being. Challenges. Stress release. Lee was a firm believer in all forms of physical fitness, including yoga. Here he assumes the lotus position, that's a full lotus, on a dock during a calm afternoon on Lake Washington, Seattle. Mind body connection, static contraction, static contraction exercises, and the benefits. And here's a program which he created and recommended for his friend and Takedi student, Dan Inno Santos. Inno Santo. Okay, and this is what we do at home. When we get around to it, right, first thing we get out of bed, we do this. The program, according to Bruce Lee's own directions, every day before getting out of bed, the student is to perform the following static contraction routine. Because you build up pent up tension through sleep. It doesn't take very long, only three minutes. Just to release your tension, it's not to give you big bulky muscles, etc. etc. Just to rid you of those that tension. So you'll be relaxed, calm and relaxed throughout your day. Part three, the warrior with him. The Jeet Kune Do, the quantum perspective. And the warrior with him. And his philosophy. Success and philosophy of life. Bruce Lee believed that self knowledge and success were interrelated. Self knowledge was simply an accurate means by which to comprehend the world around us in the way in its ways and means. Lee viewed life as a process, and despite his incredible success in global popularity, his philosophy allowed him to keep a level head when at times the world around him seemed to be going mad. In an essay written in early 1973 entitled Another Actor Speaks His Mind, Lee expressed this insight. Dedication, absolute dedication, is what keeps one ahead. A sort of indomitable obsessive dedication and realisation that there's no end or limit because life is an ever-growing process and ever-renewing process. The key to success then lies in the wisdom and the inner contentment derived from learning to understand and to live with nature's ways, abandoning all artifice and false or useless knowledge and replacing these with a trustful acceptance of nature's wisdom and feeling and a humble and unpretentious imitation of nature's silent dictates. Bruce Lee read the read Lao Tzu and well understood this passage from the sage. 
Here he is with all the students. A group of seekers. Lee believed, however, that while we are still alive, it is our duty, if we are to fulfill ourselves as human beings, to seek to understand ourselves, discover ourselves, and to express ourselves honestly and to the fullest extent of our individual potential. The art of fighting without fighting. Uh, here's the example here. It says, on the junk, a New Zealand martial artist begins to flex his martial muscle, attempting to intimidate his fellow passengers. It's actually incorrect. That guy was from Australia. Uh, I forgot his name, Peter something. He may have had a school here in New Zealand. Glen in this area, can't really... Not really sure, with Carl Sargent or something like that. Not really sure, but apparently he was an Australian, not a New Zealander. You know, the guy on the boat that said, What, you're out of fighting? The fighting, out of fighting without fighting? Yeah. And that weird voice, that was Australian. We don't talk like that here in New Zealand. Yeah. I think his name was Peter Archer. You can look up and see if he was actually a New Zealander, but I'm thinking he was an Australian. Listen from Master Sun, so about Brandon Lee. And his views on his father. Signposts. Uh, letters to someone called John who wanted to become a student of JKD and he explains lots of things to him. He was an ever writer and note jotter. Let's talk about Bruce Lee. Self education makes great mean. What's this here? Don't know what that actually says. Looks like it's an F R O K I. Uh, if you think a thing impossible, you never make it possible. Ah! If you think a thing impossible, you will make it impossible. Sure, what that is. Looks like a B. Don't really know. The films of Bruce Lee. Or oh, maybe it's an R, ah, like a realization, right? Fury. What about that? This goes into detail about what that was about and what the hidden messages were in these movies. Where the dragon, into the dragon, and so forth. In your own process, Dan and Santo. Talk with John, uh, Dan, and Santo, and they Santo by looks of it. And a guy called Alex Ben Block who wrote a couple of books on Bruce Lee. Appendixes. Eco Zen by Alan Watts, introduced by Mark Watts. The Tao of Wu Xin by Alan Watts. Hu Xin, Hu Xin, I'm not too sure I said last one. Hu Xin, Hu Xin. 
Anyway, Bruce Lee's principal works. And until his death. Chronology of the life of Bruce Lee, from when he was born to when he passed. And references, sources to where all the information came from. Or you can have a look, read these to find them there. Index. About the author, okay, John Little. Okay, so this John Little was himself a student of Lee's art of Chi Kune Do. And he's the only one selected by the Bruce Lee estate to. Who, he's been authorised to review the entirety of Lee's personal notes, sketches and reading annotations, and to edit books on the subject of Lee's martial art, etc, etc. So they've given him that, the, he's the only one that's got that permission to really do that, according to that. And here's some information on the back of the book, about the book. And that's our video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then subscribe to our channel, give us a like, add your comments, and then share this video with your family and friends. We'll leave the link to this at the bottom of the video so you can go and borrow this book and read it in your downtime or when you have time at your own leisure.